Hi. <clears throat> I'm Sandra Paulson of the Bainbridge Institute for Integrative Psychology. And I wanted to say a few words today in memory of my friend, and I'd like to call him a colleague, Yak Pongsep. I hesitate to call him a, a colleague only because he was so brilliant that he was more a mentor and certainly a scholar and someone I was privileged to know. But I'd, I'd like to say a few words on the occasion of his death a few days ago. Yak Pongsep's contributions to the field of psychology are enormous. He's not yet fully appreciated, although many of them admire, even revere him, and I think the day will come when he will be appreciated on the level of the greatest contributors in the field. But it wasn't always that way. He started out funding his own research back when the study of emotion was considered epiphenomenon, that is, an artifact not worth studying, and that the only thing worth studying was behavior and cognition. And he made his own way and persevered. He was a psychologist and a scientist. Many of us psychologists don't do experimental research, and we're out there and our brains slowly turn to mush because we're so busy helping and attuning to what people need. And some pick the experimental scientific route, and it's to be honored. There's no money in it, not much. And if you pick the wrong topic that's politically incorrect at the time, like emotions were in the 80s and the 90s, it's a very hard, arduous road. And yet he did it, and he came up with his seminal uh, contribution in this book, Affective Neuroscience. It's not only the name of the book. It is a field that he created. There was no affective neuroscience until he made it happen. He not only made clinical, uh, sorry, he not only made inferences about the role of emotions in human development and human pathology and normal functioning, he experimentally proved that we are born with hardwired subcortical emotional circuitry. It's there from birth and it requires no learning. He identified in his study of rats right, and other mammals, but not humans, because you cannot experimentally ablate human brain tissue, as you can imagine. But he established the presence of seven affective circuits, and they are seeking, the mother of all circuits, as he called it, rage, fear, lust, care, Panic, by which he means not panic attacks, but that infant separation panic when it's separated from its mother, as well as play. Some of us think that shame might also be a circuit or a circuit breaker is what I think, but he didn't find shame in rats as they're notoriously shameless. I'd like to think he'd appreciate that humor. This is a photo of Yak reading from that book in about, two th I think it was summer of 2009, at a, at a book reading in my log house on Bainbridge Island, Washington, where I am now, actually, the same room, different wall behind me. I'd had a book, um, my 2009 book was published then uh, looking through the eyes of trauma and dissociation. It was illustrated with cartoons. And so was Robin Shapiro's Solutions 2 book was published the same year. And so Robin and I had a book signing, and I invited Yak to join us, and he kindly did and read from his book. In the foreground are two of my colleagues, Ulrich Lanius and Katie O'Shea, both of whom have been influenced, as I have, by the work of Yak Pongsep. In our work as EMDR 
practitioners and students of the theories behind EMDR and how it um, how brain structure and function affects what we see that works and doesn't work with EMDR. There's much more to say on that subject, and I've said it in other places. Here, I simply want to say how lovely it was that this good man came and read from his book. I think he read from the last chapter. It was very poignant. <laughs> this It's not a very good quality photo, but it's a precious moment because... I was presenting them tongue-in-cheek with a, an award for Yuck's research in uh, emotions, which was, of course, rat-running science. And I presented him with a, a research award that I, I even forget what it was now, but the initials were R-A-T for a rat award. And you can see he's holding a trophy that includes a, a rat, and that's his bride, Anissa Miller, and they were feigning surprise because someone had tipped them off that I was giving them this surprise award, and they were pre sweetly pretending to be surprised. <laughs> oh. Yuck was also kind enough to write the preface for this book, The Neurobiology and Treatment of Traumatic Dissociation 2014 by Lanius, Paulson, and Corrigan, and let me tell you, we felt supremely blessed to have him write the preface for our book. It's a little bit like having Moses agree to write the preface, preface for your book. So that was a, a coup for us. Yuck's original seminal tome from 1998, The Affect of Neuroscience, a brilliant book, and you have to be pretty scientific to read it. And he uh, also published this book, and I think it was 2012, the Archaeology of Mind with Lucy Bivan. And this was intended to be readable by the public, and so you don't have to be a scientist to read this one. This lovely picture shows Yuck, and I think it was about 2009 or 10. I'm not sure. Yuck sent it to me. Um, here he is in discussion with another important contributor, Alan Shore. And I like to think, although I don't know, that they were discussing the, the merits and demerits of their two models. And Yuck's, Yuck's on the left, and his model is a bottom-up model of understanding affective processing in the brain. And Alan Shores is more a left-right analysis. I'd love to have been a fly on the wall in that conversation. But make no mistake, this was a, a great scholar, a great contributor. All of those that, of us that work in the field of clinical psychology, especially trauma and dissociation, where the thwarting of the felt ownership of emotion and body sensation are so seminal to the symptoms that people have and to their resolution. All of us should be eternally grateful, and many don't even know his contribution. But make no mistake, this was a great scholar and a great man, and he will be sorely missed. Rest in peace, Yak Ponksip.